Welcome to your program. Shalom, shalom. What a wonderful day it is. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, I am your host, Dr. Marisol Pelser, and the other host, my beloved husband. Be blessed. We love you. Brother Dexter Pelser. Amen. Isn't it amazing, Dexter, to serve God every day? Amen. His mercies are new every, every day. day. That's right. Every and morning. And today's program is about walking in wisdom in regards to prophetic words. Sometime, sometimes we get a prophetic word, but it's not a prophetic word that is from the Lord. And when we get those false prophetic words, we need to be able to walk in wisdom and discernment because those prophetic words, in a way, are kind of like a curse yep. because they come in and they sink into our spirit. That's right. And they dictate, you know, our actions, what we're going to do in our life. But because they're not from God, what happens is they bring confusion. They bring confusion. And, and what happens is, we, we separate from the paths that God has us to do because we've received this prophetic work that is not of God. And, you know, it's so important that when you get a prophetic word that you test it and that you walk in wisdom and discernment and in wise, godly counsel. And Brother Dexter is going to be talking about that today. And uh, I want to encourage you before we start and we pray to send your prayer request to our website, shalomshalom.org, um, and send us your testimonies and what the Lord is doing, what you want us to pray, and even requests with questions that you might have that you want Brother Dexter to answer for you. Um, so... Before we start our teaching, I want to go to the Lord in prayer with all of you in agreement and Brother Dexter for some of the needs that we have received. Amen. Amen. So that we together as the body of Christ come in agreement for the healing and the miracles that That's our right. brothers and sisters need Amen. all over the world. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank Amen. you and we bless you and we worship you, Lord, and we come to you, Lord, and asking you, Lord, and believing what you did on the cross, that by Amen. your stripes people are healed. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I raise up Kawat from New Jersey. She wants for her son in Egypt to get a good wife. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you send her son a wife. And Lord, she also wants prayer for her knees, Lord. She needs kneeling in her, healing in her knees. We come at me and Dexter. Come in agreement that she's healed in By the Jesus' name. the stripes of the name. Lamb of God be healed in your knees in Jesus' name. Amen. Lawrence Baker is a man who's in impact rehabilitation. Father, they, her, his family has asked Linda for full recovery. We speak life into you. We speak recovery over you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Father, we just ask you to anoint the rehab and even the people that are yes. doing the rehab, Father, to be a blessing so that there is complete and full recovery yes. in the name of Jesus. Be blessed for full recovery in Jesus' name. Amen. Lucy has pain in her back bones, and her bones are decaying, and they're pushing against her nervous system. She wants prayer. Father, we just lift up Lucy, Lord. Lord, we ask you to align her back and to make her bones new. Yes. And Lord, to fix her nervous system and for align the the nerves and the bones so they're not pushed, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name, can these decaying bones live? And we prophesy over you, bones come alive in Jesus' name. Amen. And pain go and the spinal cord and the entire yes. back be realigned on earth as it is in heaven. In yes, Jesus Lord. Name. My Sarah needs prayer for her knees because they're hurting. She can't walk well and she has a backache. We speak life into your back, and we declare in the name of Jesus Amen. that you are healed in Jesus' name. We agree in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen. Um, we have Milan Mikael. She wants Jesus to send her a husband. 
Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you sent her a husband, yes, Lord. A godly husband. A Lord. godly husband. And, Lord, we also ask that you cure her depression. She's sad and depressed because she doesn't have a husband. Father, reveal yourself to her that Jesus should be her husband before anyone. And the joy of yes. your salvation overtake you in, in Jesus, Jesus' name. name. We also pray for Imad Kamel. He wants to stop smoking in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that he stopped smoking. And Father, we also pray that they find Mina, who's been this, who has disappeared for four years, and they don't know where he is, Father. We ask, Father, that they find Mina in Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. And that we they ask get you, news. Father, just shine a light and, and, and bring a light into her heart also to go back home and contact them in the name of Jesus. Shine a light where she is so she will be found in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for that, Lord. Amen. Precious Lord. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Amen. So, Brother Dexter, we already know that we have to cancel words of curses against us. That's right. But how do we... How do we do this for prophetic work? So my question to you is, how do you test prophetic words to know if they're of God? Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, and we're just so thankful to be with you today. And, and again, the Lord um, really spoke to us the other night with Mary Kay Baxter while we were praying, and he just started giving us revelation of some scriptures that we want to release that. He told us to teach on it and release it to the body. And, and that's important because the Father wants us protected and freed from any attacks of the enemy. And this is what this is about. Sometimes the attacks, we don't even see them, Marisol. And it's important that we know um, the Word of God and what it says with regard to receiving true prophetic words. So I want to start out with just a fundamental here, which is, first of all, the Word of God says that prophets are subject to prophets. So prophetic words should always be tested by other prophets. That's why God sets that up with prophets more, more wisdom can actually counsel and give through the spirit and through the wisdom of God and through their anointing a confirmation of true words. That's really important that we understand that. But also, um, the, the word of God tells us to seek counsel, um, which is really important in today's era and, and what we live in, that we always seek godly counsel and wisdom. Dexter, I want to read this scripture that sure. the Lord gave me when we were talking about this. And it says, Wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men, from men whose words are perverse. So these false words are perverse, who leave the straight paths to walk in dark ways, who delight in doing wrong and rejoice in the perverseness of evil, whose paths are crooked, and who are devious in their ways. Because some of these prophetic words are devious, aren't they? That's right. And, and um, so we want to build some foundations, Marisol. Mm -hmm. and one of them is that you, there are false words that are out there in the body. And how do we know that? Because the Word of God says that. So let's just start with that, first of all. Let's go to Ezekiel, if we can. Um, and let's learn about what God says about false words. Because everything that we should be taught, should come and be confirmed from the Word of God. So Ezekiel chapter 13 is, in my Bible, titled, Woe to Foolish Prophets or False Prophets. And there is a series of things God shows you how to identify false words and the consequences of false words. And, and I just want to read for a second Ezekiel 13, 22, when it's talking about false prophetic words. It says, Because with lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and you have strengthened the hands of the wicked so that he does not turn from his wicked way to save his life. Therefore, you shall no longer envision futility nor practice divination, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. This whole chapter is talking about false words and witchcraft that are actually targeted against the people of God. And I'm talking about people who pretend to be prophets and pretend to give true words but are giving false words. This is very dangerous. Almost the entire chapter of Ezekiel 13 is dedicated to this false prophetic words and the consequences of them. So again, it strengthens the wicked, but it brings woe to the godly. And that's what Marisol was saying. So 
Before we end today, we're going to pray that all these false words that may have been received in, into our hearts, into our minds, that the Lord God will heal us and cleanse us of those before we finish. This is very important because the Father does not want those false words to attach to our hearts and lead us astray of his perfect will. He said many are walking the wrong path because they've received false words. So we're going to not only talk about how to protect against false words, but how to identify them and then how to be cleansed of them. Very important teaching today. And if you don't think you've received false words, I, well, if you've been around prophets, you always have to be aware of this. Um, because prophets, at times, will be walking in their flesh, and they will give false words. Otherwise, the Word of God wouldn't tell us about this. So, so Marisol, I want to talk about three things. One, how do you determine if a word is true? Number one, is seek godly counsel. So I want to go to Proverbs, if we can, 11.14. Let's build the base here of what we do to protect ourselves from false words. Proverbs 11.14 says, When there is no counsel, the people perish. I want you to stop. So when you don't seek counsel, the people perish. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So first of all, one thing that the Lord has shown us is if you are new to the Lord or it doesn't matter whether you're new or not and you get a prophetic word, one of the things you should always do is seek counsel. For me, it's pretty easy. I'm surrounded by prophets, including my wife. So the first thing I do is I check with her and I pray together with her if the word is true because I want the counsel of people with wisdom. And this is really important, brothers and sisters, I don't seek the counsel if someone's going to tickle my ears and always say yes, 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 yes to everything. I seek the counsel of someone who will go to God and tell me something that is the truth, even if it hurts me or hurts my feelings. Even if I heard a flattering word I get really excited about and I find out it's false, I want to know it's false because I don't want that word to sink into my heart and take me to the right when God wants me to go straight. So. First of all, the counsel that you seek ought to be people that will always tell you the truth, even when it hurts your feelings. I don't want to hear lies. I don't want them to tickle my ears. Very important, number one. And, you know, and, and counsel from people that base their counsel on what the Word of God says and people who you know are led by the Spirit. That's right. You In know. other words, people with wisdom and discernment, Marisol, mm -hmm. and that know God and know the Holy Spirit. So, which really brings us to the second thing. The Word of God says, test every word that you hear against the Word of God. Look into the Word of God and make sure it is consistent with the Word of God. That's really important. You are supposed to test what you hear against the Word of God. Always. You know, I had a friend when I was in Bible school. He, his name was Bill. This was over 25 years ago. And one day we were in the cafeteria, you know, in Bible school. He says, Marisol, can I sit with you? And I said, sure. He goes, you're the only safe friend that I have at the moment. And I go, what? He goes, yes. He says, all the girls that I know, he says, are prophesying that it's God's will for me to marry them. He says, but there's one problem. And I said, well, what is it, Bill? He says, there's seven of them. <laughs> that are saying that I'm supposed to marry them. Prophesying that they're yeah. supposed to marry him. And wow. he says, and the Lord hasn't spoken to me about marrying any of them. Wow. He goes, it's really freaking me out. They're all going crazy. You know, that's a false prophetic word. And I said, Bill, if the Lord wanted you to marry them, he would tell you first because the word of God says, uh, men finds a wife. Right. Blessed is the man who finds a good wife. Yes. That's right. That's so, right. And it's the man finding the good wife. That's right. <laughs> no, I said, those are self-serving prophecies. Ah. Yeah. You're making a good point. I don't know. Maybe I should divert to that. Um, and I will, because this is really a big deal. We're, again, there's three things that we need to do on the positive side to confirm that words are true. And we've only spoken to two. I just want to review again. One is to seek godly counsel and wisdom. And number two is to check the word to be consistent with the word of God in the essence of what it's asking for. Um, and I'm just going to say, number three is um, really pray and pray and pray and let the Holy Spirit witness to you that it's a true word. 
and we'll maybe expand on that in a moment. But I want to give you two areas that we are consistently seeing with false words. And, and God wants this warning to sink into our hearts because it's contrary to the word of God. And one is what Marisol just said, a self-serving word. This is very dangerous in the body of Christ. We have had people giving people prophetic words where they will personally gain from it. Like a prophetic word is released to you, X, Y, Z, and as a result of that, by the way, you'll give me 50% of your business or you'll write a check to me. Those are very difficult words. A prophetic word should not be self-serving. It should be to bring a person into alignment with the will of God for them. A person who gives that word should not personally profit from it. And let me tell you, this is, this is more common than you think. There is a brother, and I, um, Lord Willen will have him on the show. He's, he's pretty well known. If we give you his name, you would know him. But he was given a false word about giving a million dollars. And here's the danger of it. It came from his own pastor. You've got to be really careful about that. He was told he has to do it. And he felt no joy inside, no anything. But he, was, he felt compelled to give that money because of the word of how he would be blessed a hundredfold, etc., if he gave this money. And he was compelled to do it by the pastor. A million dollars. Well, that was all he had. He had retired, and that was all of his savings. And I know that's a lot of money. Don't, I'm not diminishing the fact that that was a lot of money. But nevertheless, when he gave it, and later on the Lord spoke to him, when he had no money left and was trying to figure out how to live, the Lord spoke to him and said, I never told you to give that to them. You never asked me. That's a false, self-serving prophetic word. And be careful all because it comes by, from someone that has a title of a pastor, apostle, or whatever. If there is a promise like for a hundredfold return or something else if you'll give this money. By the way, you look at Malachi chapter 4 and you look at all the verses on giving and there's not one that says man determines what your blessing will be from God. Every one of them is consistent that God alone determines your blessing when you give. Man does not. Even through a prophetic word. So be very careful about self-serving prophetic words. So my brother and sister, if you get a prophetic word, which the person giving you the prophetic word is going to gain something, that is manipulation, that has motives that are selfish, my wise advice run. from the kingdom is run. run. That's right, run. Run, run. And if somebody tells you, you know, um, give this money so we can have this meeting because of this, this, and that. Run. The only way you give is the Holy Spirit Lead you. leads you. And you have you joy. Give. The Word of God says to give with joy in your heart. If you don't have that joy, you stop and you pray. And I assure you, because God says if you ask him for wisdom and counsel, in James, it says he'll always give it to you. He'll answer that prayer, whether you should do it or not. He'll always give you that answer. And you know, Dexter, a lot of times I find that when somebody wants to manipulate you with a false prophetic word or, or manipulate you into giving, they will isolate you. They That's the second to, thing, they yes. They try to pull you apart right. from your friends, from, from your counsel. family, from prophets. They'll try to control you. They'll That's tell right. you, oh, I want to prophesy to you in private. private. Be weary of all those things in the name of Jesus. That's right. So if someone wants you know? to separate you, yeah. and I'm also speaking to you that are more elderly, because I was an executive director at a senior center, and I saw many of the elderly being abused. And when I mean oh. abused, I mean money was being stolen from them yes. over and over again. And I'm telling you, people that are schemers are in the body of Christ also. This is a truth, unfortunately, because the Word of God says there will be wolves in with the sheep. That is a truth. So if anyone, like if your grandmother or your mother is elderly and someone is trying to separate them from you as a child giving them counsel, you tell your parent or you tell your grandparent to run because that is a ploy of the enemy. That's what he did with Eve. Satan separated her. He didn't attempt Eve in front of God. 
he separated her and did it in private, a little secret conversation. So be careful for those who separate you from your godly wisdom and counsel and say you don't need to check with anyone. Before you do anything, you should always pray and seek counsel if it's anything significant in your life. And test it against the word of God. Those are three things you should always do. I always do it. And Marisol, I mean, you know that. Whenever I hear something, the first thing I do is I open my Bible, and then we pray together, and then we seek counsel with other people. This is a routine that we do. And God promises, and I've never seen him not faithful in this. His promise is when you seek counsel, you'll always be blessed. He will bless it. He will always reveal the truth to you, and he will always bless it. So follow the word of God. And again, if anyone wants to separate you from counsel, that little, I'll tell you something in secret, or if someone has a self-serving motive that they'll actually benefit from the word they're giving you, man, ask God right away, God, this just doesn't feel right. This doesn't sound in accordance with your word. And most times you'll find it's not a true word. And you know, brothers and sisters, you know, a lot of people speak of doom and gloom because they want you to invest in things, you know, That's right. to secure your future in food or in rice or in this thing or in that thing. Scare tactics. Scare tactics. Thank you. you. That's number three money. that they do. Yes, that's good, Marisol. Exactly. Scare tactics, where they'll talk about the collapse of your country, the collapse of your currency, everything else. And then at the end of it, they'll talk about something that they're selling to protect you. The word of God says you do not have a spirit of fear, but a, spower, a spirit of power, love, and self-control. You do not act out of fear. Anyone who comes to you and makes you fearful is not of God, they're of the enemy. Because the word of God is very clear. He who creates that kind of fear in you is of the devil. So be careful when they are using fear to, to get you to do something. To give money, to donate money for a meeting, or to, the, or to give you money to protect yourself. You know what? If the, if the economy collapses, none of that stuff is going to work. You just got to trust in God. Well, first of all, and if the economy collapses, the word of God is very clear that you'll prosper in it. Yes. Even if you look at Isaac and Jacob, they prospered in the middle of the economy it collapsed because that's the promise of the word of God for his children, for his sons and his daughter. So you have nothing to fear anyway. Amen. So, again, thank you, Marisol, because that's the third reason we hadn't thought about, but the Lord brought it out. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, again, test the word with godly counsel against the word of God, and pray. And that means the Holy Spirit, when I have a true word, I know because the Spirit inside me leaps with joy. I know it because I get confirmation from the Holy Spirit. And I ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, discern for me whether this word is true or not. I do it silently. That's okay. But the Holy Spirit will always be activated to give you discernment as to if something's true or not true. And if you do those three things, I believe you will never be hurt by a false word, and you will always recognize it. I believe that is the truth of the word of God, and God will always fulfill that truth in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, the Lord just brought something else to my mind. When somebody asks you for money with these excuses, and they have an urgency, you got to give it now, you got to give it now, you got to give it now. And you shouldn't pray about it. They, you know, and they pray, and they pressure you, they pressure you. Don't even pray about it. Just say no. That's right. Because no, you know, they don't want you to go and research it and get godly counsel. It's not of God. Just say no. Don't get pressured into giving you money. That's right. I mean, we're telling you this because we love you. We want to protect you. We've seen so many people get hurt. That's right. And you know what? There are legitimate ministries out there. Oh, absolutely. That you can give to. They follow the, you know, like Cross TV, they follow kingdom principles that the money goes for things of God. You, and they don't pressure you. They don't use these pressure tactics. If you don't send us money, we're going to have to get a hurricane or anything like that. Right. That is we're not have an earthquake. of God. That is horrible. That is even not speak those of curses. God. And let me tell you something. Those of you who are cursing your country, whether it's America, I don't care what country you're in. 
If you're speaking against your government and cursing your country, do you realize you're going against the word of God? Have you ever read Jeremiah chapter 29, where God commands wherever you live to bless that country and bless its leaders? Have you read in the New Testament where he commands you to bless all your leaders, even if you disagree with them? And the word of God says in Jeremiah 29, if you bless the city, the place where you're in, you bless it, then you will prosper. But if you curse it, guess what? You're going against God's command, and you'll bring that curse right on your own head by cursing America, cursing its currency, or anything else. Let's stop cursing your, our country, and let's start blessing it with our words. Where does God say to, to curse Israel, for example? He says, if you curse Israel, you'll be cursed. Well, in Jeremiah 29, if you curse anywhere where you live, you're going to have that curse come on your own head. Stop it. Stop listening to people who do that. I always shut them down. I said, no, no, we're called to bless in accordance with the word of God. We need to obey and bless our country, bless our city, bless our state, wherever you live. And you watch what happens. You bless your business. You bless your business owners. If you're in a small business, you bless them every day, and you watch how God blesses you, promotes you, and blesses your city, blesses your state, blesses your country. In Jesus' name, it makes a huge difference, brothers and sisters. That's the word of God. Amen. So let's keep going because I want to get to a couple of more fundamental scriptures here about the power of words. And, and um, first of all, we know in Proverbs 18, 21, that our words have the power of life and death. It's really important. You can speak life or death into any situation, anybody, every day of your life. You can curse them or you can speak life into them. Because as Jesus said, our words are spirit and life when we bless people. So I want to, and I just want to uh, give a scripture so it will make us realize how Jesus looks at how important our words are. So turn to Matthew 12, verse 33. This is a great, this is Jesus speaking in red. Words are in red. We should always listen to every word of the Bible, but these are in red by Jesus himself. He says, make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. So first of all, you will, we will know, brothers and sisters, whether someone is truly of Christ by their fruit. By your fruit you are known. Jesus taught that over and over again. But listen what he says. Brood of vipers, how can you be evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when people jokingly curse and say bad things, that's coming out of their heart. And sometimes afterwards, they catch themselves and say, I was just joking. No, out of the heart, the mouth speaks, number one. And listen to what it keeps saying. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things, blessings. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. Now listen to this. But I say to you that every idle word men may speak, don't be careless with your words. They will give account of it in the day of judgment. Listen. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Out of the heart proceed our words. This is really important. So our words have the power of life and death. And that means if you're out there speaking false prophetic words for your own self-gain, you better stop because you're not only hurting yourself and bringing condemnation, but you very well may be bringing a curse into that person's life to get them off of God's perfect will, and you'll be held accountable for that also. Now, Let's read Isaiah 54, 17, because we're going to start to build the foundation of the prayer we're going to pray at the end here. And it says this. You know, we've taught on Psalm 91, which is our favorite scripture on protecting ourselves and our family. But another really favorite scripture, at least for Marisol and I, is Isaiah 54, 17. It says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Wow. Did you hear that? I love the scripture. 
Because God says not, not only no weapon for him against you shall prosper. And remember, our righteousness is from the blood of the Lamb of God. By believing in Jesus Christ, we're cleansed and made righteous in the eyes of God. By his blood alone, not by our good works, but by believing in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. But it says that every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. There is an action we are required to take. Read that carefully. Every word that rises against you, including false prophetic words, you shall condemn. Including curses against your family that you're not even aware of. Including words spoken in, behind your back by backbiters over in the corner. And don't kid yourself. People love to gas, gossip and backbite each other. But it has an action required of you. You shall condemn. That means once you condemn those words, they are no longer spirit and death and they won't affect you or your family. So this is something Marisol and I do all the time. We cancel words spoken against us. And the other night, Marisol was walking through the house, and just in the spirit, she heard these murmuring words against us in the spirit. And God was just letting her know someone was cursing us. And simply by that, we stopped and we proclaimed Isaiah 54, 17. Did we not, Marisol? Yes. Which is, we, in the name of Jesus, we condemn those words and we cancel any assignments by the demonic powers related to those words against us in the name of Jesus. And I know that every time, I don't care if a witch is doing witchcraft against us, and yes, witchcraft is real. Read the Bible. It's even in the New Testament. I don't care if they're even doing witchcraft. When we condemn and cancel their words, they have no power. Their power is gone in the name of Jesus. This is very powerful. And we're going to pray this word at the end to also cancel the effect in our heart of any false prophetic words. And I want to tell you why, what the Father revealed to us. Marisol, many in the body of Christ have rejected prophets today yeah. and rejected prophetic words because they've been hurt. They've been giving false words, and they believed them, and then they got hurt when they found out, number one, they weren't true, and number two, like our friend who lost a million dollars, they got hurt badly. Manipulated. Manipulated, and they got and hurt used. badly. And so their hearts are such that, and we've met many, I don't want to hear a prophetic word anymore because I've been hurt. A bunch of hypocrites have spoken words to me, and I don't ever want to hear a prophetic word again. But today, God is going to heal everyone that is listening so that our hearts are open for the prophetic word. And you know why? Because prophecy truly spoken, will encourage you, will edify you, and will confirm that you're walking in God's perfect will. And it will guide your steps. Because the Word of God says that God doesn't do anything without first revealing it to His prophets. And the Word of God says He'll reveal His secrets even to His prophets first. So I want, in my circle of close friends, well, I can't get any closer, she's my wife, but I want prophets. And I am desperate always for prophetic words. Because by them, God always encourages, uplifts me, and confirms that I'm walking in his will in certain areas. You know, Dexter, usually 95% of the time when I give a prophetic word, it's confirmation of something that the Lord has already put in that That's person's right. heart. Was spoken to them. But they weren't sure yet. They were they weren't tentative. Sure. They weren't bold to walk in it. No. You know, you need to go to the Lord yourself and ask him for guidance and seek him and he will show you your path. You know, when, when I met Dexter, yeah. you know, I, I, when I met him, my heart jumped and I knew that he was special. But I wanted a confirmation from God himself to me myself and I asked the Lord to give me a confirmation I asked I was going on a business trip and I said Lord he's never given me a present mm -hmm. and if it's your will for me to marry this man when I come back from my trip have him give me as a present a Christian book when I get to the airport well when I got there he gave me three Christian books, and I was stunned, stunned. And then I received other confirmations, but I already knew God had spoken in my heart. You know, stop giving other people the responsibility for your life. The responsibility for your life That's is right. for you to seek 
God yourself. Ask him to show him what he wants you to do. Then you can receive a prophetic word from God and to confirm. But if your life is too important to just live at random, you know, Dexter? Yep. To live at random. It is. And we're telling you this because we love you and we want to protect you. Amen. And, you know, since we love Jeremiah 29, which is, of course, Marisol, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans for a hope and for a future. I want to keep reading after Jeremiah 29, 11, which talks about what you just said. And that means, and, and, and that's a good word, Marisol. Stop trying to place responsibility for your walk with the Lord on everyone else and blame of when things go wrong on everyone else. Because here's what God says when you seek him with all your heart. Listen to it. Huh. I love this. Right after Jeremiah 29, 11, Jeremiah 29, 12, just talking about the plans he has for you. He says, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart, I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. And then he had us a whole slew of promises. Do you understand what, I mean, this is beautiful. When you seek him with all your heart and for your, what plans he, this is right after the plans he has for you, for your life, for your calling. He's not going to hide them from you. He just said he's going to show them to you when you seek him with all your heart. And that's the key. You seek him until you get an answer from him. And then as Marisol said, the beauty of that is when you start walking with him, prophets will show up on your left and right giving you true prophetic words and continue to confirm the path that you're on. And God is so good about that. And I'm going to tell you, Marisol, we have had several events in our life that have been, I'll call it somewhat very difficult or tragic. And before each one of them, God warned us and told us it was going to happen, but his hand would be over the situation. And so that we would not fall apart. We would not have anxiety and stress. He really gifted us with a word of something that was going to happen that normally you would just fall apart on. But let us know his hand was upon it. And I'm telling you, God is so good about giving that kind of prophetic word. And when he did it last time, Marisol, two separate prophets gave us the same word independently in the same week. And the word was miraculous. It was on a certain day something would happen that would appear to be tragic, Christmas Day, and it happened on Christmas Day, but we were at peace. I'm telling you, God is so good. He is so beautiful. He wants us to walk in a shalom, shalom. And when you hang out with prophets, you will find part of that is you'll always get words of encouragement, and therefore you'll keep your perfect peace because you'll know you're walking with the Lord in his perfect will. You know... One of my favorite scriptures, and I have it on my little book here, it says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am help. Trust in him that he's going to help you and guide you completely for whatever you have to do. You know? And, and just believe that he's your shield. And, you know, one of the ways that the Lord also protects you is when you have friends that are prophetic, I, you know, and there are prophets. You know, not every prophetic word is to appease you and to make you feel wonderful. No. And see little angels and to make you feel it's great. It's not just to tickle your ears. ears. You know, one of my best friends, you know, I call him up and I say, listen, this is wrong. And I even, you know, he's my really good friend, so I say, you knucklehead, you can't do that. And I love him. I tell him. That's right. I don't, and he says, I love you because you tell me the always truth. Always tell me the truth. You always watch my back. That's right. Your friends who watch your back will tell you the truth. That's right. You know, you don't want all these yes people around you. That does not help you. Glory be to God, Nathan came to David after sinning with Bathsheba and murdering Bathsheba's husband. And Nathan, obeying the word of the Lord, went to David and told him a little parable. And at the end said, this man is you who had stolen someone's precious little you, little sheep. And it convicted David and brought him to repentance. 
That is God's love and discipline. He's always trying to bring us back to him, especially if we're in the midst of practicing a sin against us. Because if you read Galatians 5.22, you'll realize if you continue practicing that sin, your very salvation can be at risk. Because it says those who practice the following sins will not see God. This is really a big deal. So God in his love will at times give us a corrective word through his prophets like Nathan to David. Don't only want tickling words that tickle your ears and tell you you're doing great. You, when we understand God, he's always changing us more into the image of Christ. Not away from Christ, but more to be like Christ. Every day he's sanctifying us. That means change can be painful, but glory be to God, it is beautiful. Because we come, become more like Jesus in his precious love every day. And I wouldn't trade that discipline for anything, Myra Saul. Mm -hmm. Not anything. So I want to I read another scripture just so that we... We kind of see about God and how he looks out after us. And it's Isaiah 17, verse 12. Excuse me. Bless you, sweetie. I like a cat. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Isaiah 17, 12. It says, Woe to the multitude of many people who make a noise like the roar of the seas, and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. The nations will rush like the rushing of mighty waters, but God will rebuke them, and they will flee away, and be chased like the chaff of the mountains before the wind, like a rolling thing before the whirlwind. So first of all, God will rebuke those who come against his people. Second of all, in verse 14, it says, Then behold, at even time, trouble. Anyone here being in trouble? Huh. And before the morning, he is no more. This is the portion of those who plunder us, and the lot of those who rob us. So Remember what we said earlier about the, the man who gave the million dollars and it wasn't the call of God to do so, and God showed that to him later on. You know, we need to trust in God as our protector, not only in Psalm 91, but in words like this, that he actually will protect us from those who are trying to rob us or plunder us. And there are many in the body that are doing that today. It is really important that we understand that God is our protector not the person who's tickling our ears. We need to trust in him and ask him wisdom and counsel in every situation. That's why we go to him, because he's the one who promises to rebuke the one who's coming after us to rob us. It's God. It's his hand that will do it. We don't want to trust in anyone else for that. So, you know, Dexter, and it's interesting that it says that they make noise. Hmm. Noise. It's like clingling sounds with no really, no meat to it. And you know, when you meet somebody and all they do is talk, 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 to try to convince you and they overpower you and they don't let you talk, that's a warning sign. That's a warning sign. You know, I, it's, I start hearing like, <laughs> mm, you know, and they just, you have to be careful. Well, the word of God teaches us just read proverbs there's so many scriptures about how we're supposed to listen most of the time not be talking and everyone says this it's so, so it's what's called a cliche right we have two ears and one only one mouth we should be listening at least twice as much as we're talking and there's some wisdom in that and we learn from job and all the way through to the psalms and even through the proverbs that a wise person holds his tongue always holds his tongue and a wise person, when they speak, everyone stops. You know who I'm talking about. Job was a wise man, and the Word of God says when he spoke, everyone was silent, which is really important that we learn that. Wisdom is demonstrated through our being silent, believe it or not. And so I want to read another scripture because we're coming near to the point where we're going to be able to pray here. And it's 109, verse 28 to 31, Psalm 109. So if we turn to Psalm 109, let's read about when people curse us, what happens. Because remember, that's what Isaiah 54, 17 is. Elise Marisol and I have traditionally used it related to when people curse us. Let's see. Verse 28, Psalm 129, I'm sorry, 109. Let them curse, but you bless. When they arise, let them be ashamed. 
but let your servant rejoice. So first of all, the word of God is pretty clear. We're not to curse those who curse us. Jesus said that. He said, hey, this is, even he said, this is like a new law. Those who despiteful use them, use you, bless them, love them. Completely different. In the Old Testament, it used to be an eye for an eye. If someone killed a relative of yours, you had the right to take their life. Not anymore. So it says, when they, let them curse, but you bless. And then it says in verse 29, let my accusers be clothed with shame. This is what God will do, not us, folks. And let them cover themselves with their own disgraces with a mantle. I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. Yes, I will praise him among the multitude. For he shall stand at the right hand of the poor to save him from those who condemn him. So God is going to save us from them, those who condemn us. But remember, one of the ways he does this is, is Isaiah 54, 17. He says, condemn those who curse you. Condemn those words. Don't condemn them, but condemn their words. This all matches in the word of God. You cancel or condemn their words that are spoken against you or against your country. Gosh, when Marisol and I hear people curse our country all the time, we immediately say, we cancel those words in the name of Jesus Christ. We condemn those words. They are no longer spirit and death against our country. We cancel them in the spirit life. That is really important. So the word of God says God will rise up. And he will be the one who will act. But you do your part and condemn those words. So again, obedience is better than sacrifice. My people per perish for lack of understanding. If we obey these simple truths, pray Psalm 91, protection of our family all the time, condemn any words that are spoken against us or our family. And remember, Jesus described these words as careless words, right? Remember in Matthew 12, these are care they almost seem just casual, careless words. Joining in with gossip, cursing someone, backbiting them. These are the kind of words he's talking about. But these words, if they speak death into someone or their situation, are actually curses. And your words have the power of life and death. So be careful not only with your tongue gate, what you speak. Put a guard on your tongue. But also, if you hear words spoken against you or your family, condemn those words in the name of Jesus. Very important. Okay, so Marisol, are we getting ready to pray? Yes. Okay, and the Lord really wants to cleanse us of these false words because he wants us in his perfect will. So before we pray, can you remember to go to shalomshalom.org, send us your prayer request. As you can see, I love praying. Send us your testimony, the things that the Lord is doing. And if you feel led of the Lord, there's a link there where you can partner with us financially for us to continue to proclaim the gospel. Amen. You know, but do it out of love for souls and for the kingdom. Remember, shalomshalom.org. You can also visit us on our Facebook page, Shalom TV Ministry. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, again, God wants to release some things into the body through this prayer. So just yes. join in, raise your hands, however you do it. Fold yes. your hands. It doesn't matter. God honors any way you, you, you lift up this in agreement to prayer to him. So we want to release what God asks us to. So, yes. Father, almighty God, yes. in the name of Jesus, we just yes. worship you and praise you. You are beautiful yes. and perfect in your ways. For yes. the Lord would say to each one of us, I know the plans I have for you. you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. And plans for a hope and for a future. Yes. So, Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I repent of any actions I have taken yes. or receiving any false words into my yes. heart and taken actions that have been disobedient yes. to your perfect will in my life. I repent to those, Father. And in the name of Jesus, I ask you to put me back into the perfect will for your life. So, Father, in the name of Jesus... I condemn every false word spoken to me and every curse spoken against me or my family, all the generations going back yes. to Noah. I cancel all curses against yes. my family that are residing in my family. Yes. Any of our sins we yes. repent of, and we cancel every false prophetic yes. word that has resided in my heart or in my mind that I have yes. taken action on. I cancel them. And now, Jesus. in accordance with your word, I ask you to cleanse my yes. conscience and my mind and take those words away from me yes. in the name of Jesus for me acting on them. By the blood yes. of the Lamb, I yes. cleanse my mind. I cleanse my conscience yes. in the name of Jesus. 
and I resist those words. I reject yes. them and in the name of Jesus. They will not touch me if they are false in Jesus', in Jesus name. name. And Father, now yes. I ask for you to bring godly counselors yes. and wisdom into my life. In Jesus name. I ask you to bring godly counsel into yes. my life that will yes. not tickle my words but will tell me yes. the truth. And Father, in the name yes. of Jesus, I choose to accept true prophecy. Yes. I need true prophecy. I will not reject any of your spiritual gifts in the body because yes. we all need each other. I repent of not wanting the true prophetic word because I've been hurt in the past. In the name of Jesus, I just yes. tell you, Father, I'm sorry. I repent of that. Yes. And I ask you to bring true prophetic words back into yes. my life. And Father, I ask for the yes. discernment and the wisdom and the counselors yes. to discern that true word. Holy yes, Spirit, I surrender to you to discern the true word and to show me what is true and false. Yes, give me peace and joy when it is true word. Yes. And give me angst or consternation or just I feel yes. really ugly inside when it is a false word. I surrender yes. to you completely to be led by you in accordance Jesus, with the word of God, Holy Spirit. And Father, we just ask you to bless the body of Christ with true prophetic words. Jesus. That you would arise a heart and a desire within each of our yes. hearts for true prophetic words. Jesus. And to surround us with ourselves with true prophets, Father. Jesus. So that we can have that blessing in our life. For we yes. declare and decree every prophet, true prophet, yes. you are blessed. And it is a blessing to have yes. you as part of my life. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> and, and I hear one more thing, and I have to say this. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you are receiving condemning words in your heart about your salvation or other things, there is a good chance that the devil is trying to destroy you and keep you off of your, his perfect plan for your life. Remember, brothers and sisters, these words of condemnation come from the accuser himself. Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. And he can come and plant in your mind thoughts of accusation. The Lord is telling me this as we speak. And in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood into your very conscience because yes. Hebrews 10.22 says the blood of the Lamb will cleanse your conscience from all yes. guilt and shame. And in the name of Jesus, be cleansed. Yes. Because in the word of God, there is now therefore no condemnation for those of you who are in Christ Jesus. And Father, I pray a blessing of shalom, shalom over you. Jesus. Now, instead of that condemnation, be at peace in the name of Jesus. And I ask you, Father, just cover them with your peace. Let them know that there is now yes. no condemnation for them, and they are free to walk in your perfect will yes. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow. Back so, to... you have the authority with the word of God to cancel false prophetic words, curses, all that backbiting, all those things, so that you can fulfill the calling and the purposes that God has for your life. Please remember to write to us at shalomshalom.org with your testimonies, with your prayer requests. And again, if you want to partner with us financially, we would appreciate it. But most importantly, I would like for you guys to pray for us. Amen. Pray for us that Hallelujah. the Lord will continue to use us Amen. and minister to us. Amen. And then also, I feel led to say this. If you want to book Sister Mary Kay Baxter mm -hmm. to go and preach at your church, call, call us and contact us on our website, yeah. and we can help you with that. That's right. It's amazing how God uses her. That's right. So, um, I don't know, I feel like someone out there might need to go to, for her That's to visit. Right. And of course, she's the one who wrote like over 10 books, including The Divine Revelation of Hell, Divine Revelation of Heaven, and a mighty, beautiful woman of God. And, and God moves powerfully when she comes and speaks in your church. Amen. Well, God bless you, and we see you next week. Amen. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Hallelujah.